Um, I I will try to give some context. Like I am so glad that we added compensation. Um, and I'm glad that we mentioned like there are several type of DAOs. There's like several different things. So we call them one thing, but the way we engage with them, the value we create um, are different. So sometimes like it's very contextual whether we are working or we are vibing and what is it that we should get uh, as a DAO member, as a DAO leader, whatever you're involving and what is it that we should set for our own DAO. Um, then, like, so I, I, I'm leading the research on rewards and compensation. That's how we chose to call it. And then like uh, through the research, I realized by like rewards and compensation used to mean the same thing. Uh, they come from like a word called like uh, an English archaic word, but we kind of like use them differently right now in a way that like compensation, you're being compensated for some work that you have done and rewards can be like a recognition sometimes like that you were not expecting, or it can be sometimes like a more as a biological kind of programming type of reward where you're trying to like what it would map to in DAOs is like you're trying to help make people engage and you're rewarding the behavior you want. So that's like two different meanings of the same word. And what um, what I did is like just trying to like, because the solution space like of what these DAOs are, these internet native organizations are so varied, it's really hard to talk about them without like the context. and what I realize is like, we need a language for this. We need a map of like, what are the primitives of this language? And there are almost like, so we are mentioning like the work, like the value we are creating and how we account that. What is it? Is it the time? Is it the deliverable? Did you engage? Did you wipe? And what is it that you're getting? Which is the, is it the equity? Is it the shares? Is it money? Is it reputation? So I tried to kind of like look at these primitives and then list them. Like as, an, as a cartographer, what exists in those, what exists in the previous um, organizations or even like in humanity, basically. And there are almost like around 30 different ways. Like we could like name these things and all of them are valid and all of them are good if your context is right. Um, so that's like how I approach. Like there is no good or bad. It depends on who you are. How your what is your relationship type of contribution and what is the type of like what do you want to get out of it like the behaviors of the people do you want people to be long termist do you want people to like engage maybe you don't like too much so it's like kind of it's almost like a formula of like bringing these together based on what you want and sometimes there are trade offs so like there is an article like it's all going to be public good like it's in a way that is like um, creative comments. People can read it. A, an article uh, that mentions the things that I said right now exists. I can link it. And the book is going to be like a further deep down of these different primitives, as well as like the design considerations based on like, could be like, if you want long-termism, what are the things you can do? If you want, like, if you're a tokenized community, vibe type of like um DAO, what are the things you can do and it's like not necessarily and those are like kind of um in a chapter one by one uh, we want to address um what are the design considerations to pick those different type of accounting terms so i'm um, just wondering like is this are you surprised by anything you're hearing on incentives and rewards, right? This is a space about incentive rewards. You're writing a book on incentive and rewards. Is there anything that's surprised you so far with some of the, the, the feedback or input that people have provided? Uh, Guy, next year. Um, I am grateful mm -hmm. for all the different type of insights that we heard. It's not surprising. It's not... Um, it is, um, I can see still the passion and the good vibes riding on, which for me, that is, that can be a little bit interesting because I am, I've been like in this since 2018. It's not always good vibes. It's not always hype. Like it is, it's like, it can change. And 
let me tell, like, it's not, um, all the information is grateful for what I want to do. Like, I feel responsible. I feel responsible because I believe the structures that we build can create new ways to exist, work, and safety of the individuals as well, financially and in different ways. That's how I see them. So it is really hard to kind of, like when you're in it in the long term, it's really hard to make it safe all the time. There will be there will be times that things get rough and it's you don't feel good about it or you're offended. And there has to be something beyond that. Beyond like kind of that is my thinking. Of course, it doesn't have to be. There are all just like great structures that we create and that, that is like fun and entertainment and good feelings, but it's not all of them. And when it's not the case in the long term, and if you're aiming for the long term, what is that thing? And we, like San Sandy was saying, passion, and I am also like most of us in this space who are the early entrants, you, we share something common. We don't necessarily realize it. We are first comfortable to be in a white space. We are comfortable with risk, and we have the, some sort of passion that can kind of like um, burn us towards, um, in a good way, that can, that can jeer us. But like as the next wave comes in, the disappointment can be there. So passion, just like, okay, um, saying that it's impact or what you're creating is like the thing that you get is the, the, the purpose being fulfilled. That's not good enough as well, because as uh, Nishan was saying, people have lives to live and they will have to really think about like what, what else. Like I, like I sometimes feel like my passion is my punishment because I'm so driven, but I don't, I get nothing back. So as the person who has been here and as like, as all of you guys as, as being the kind of creators, my response is like that. Yes, we need to like mature it to a point where for the next entrance, we think of the safety. We think of all this, um, safety as in financial safety as in, um, being in those spaces, but what are what is it that they are getting when they when people come and contribute and create value? And when the passion runs out, when the vibes run out, what is left? Um so for that, it can be anything and everything. And that's where I kind of like go really abstract and maybe confusing. Like I think there is not one answer. Like the only thing is the communication and a language, and we don't have it yet. Like we're like if we had, if we were able to like really make, like understand on the onboarding and understand what the expectations. If we are not get anything back, if we knew that in the first entrant there will be no disappointment, and like I I read this word and it's actually like you don't design for punishment. You want a reward. But you set an expectation and you don't revert them. That is the same feeling as a punishment. So we're unintentionally not doing the language, not communicating. We are, we are creating punishments without intending to do so. Um, so I think that's the way. I'd like to add uh, a question to that. Um, one thing is like I in collaborative environments, you'll have more reciprocal relationships. And so I'm interested in learning, like, what will rewards, compensation, and incentives look like for reciprocal relationships that are built on trust, designed for, you know, fluid collaboration, open communication, you know, that's just a different, in, you know, for volunteers, maybe in a lot of cases, um, or for part-timers, you know, that like, we discussed earlier a lot of the demographics will you know are, are constantly in flux as with the market um so that's what i expect is that reciprocal relationships will have different structures um you know one thing is like the lens protocol for example with the lens protocol your social media post is an nft i've actually created it and i own it and you can buy that nft as a way to contribute to what i publish and i can actually give you an incentive to share my posts that gives you a 50 percent revenue or whatever i want to give you if somebody collects or buys that nft from something you've shared so that's just by default like inherent in the lens protocol and something that Twitter will never, you know, probably never allow you to do. 
And they don't, the platform doesn't own the media anymore in Web3. Me owning what I published can be managed in, and used to design different incentives and rewards. Um, so that, that's what I'm excited to like learn about and, and see like, you know, what fundamentally changes um, in collaborative environments. Oh, we got Raphael that just joined the space here. Awesome, really hearing everybody's unique experiences and different interests. Once in a while, but not enough, I think. Uh, so, so I appreciate that. That is something that would be good, not just for one person, but for a lot of people. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm trying to to dig into now, at least a little bit more. Thanks, Teja. Those are those are big topics, man. And you know, I, I hope we get to chat about them more. I mean, I'd like to have some input on it. And and just who do we got here from Dow Planets, by the way? Is this is Elijah? Is this Steve? Who, who's here? Oh, this is Ernest. Hey, um, is Ernest? I was oh, you're switching all the hey. accounts. <laughs> well, I was having problems on the phone. Um, it just wasn't giving me the ability to like I was I accepted the co-host invite, but for whatever reason, I just couldn't request the speaking. Um, and so I logged in on my desktop on a phone emulator app. Um, and it's what I use. <laughs> it's the <laughs> so <laughs> sorry, sorry about that. Um I just wanted to basically, you know, give a big thanks for, for everybody. These are awesome. Um, awesome. Really hearing everybody's unique experiences and different interests. Um, I wanted to, uh, you know, I'm kind of known for being in, in several different DAOs and, you know, I have different internal reasons and they all have different, um, you know, compensations and rewards. Um, and as RN DAO members, uh, Gaia and myself, Ernest of Gaia, we're not related, <laughs> just so everybody knows. Um, the, uh, <clears throat> but essentially, um, you know, it's a, it's a collective of researchers. I was super impressed with some of the research that they've published. They mostly have kind of, um, you know, individuals, you know, mostly autonomous research projects or research work groups. And then, um, you know, there's lots of, of shared learning amongst the projects and each other that creates a really good vibe. Um, and, and research is generally like grant funded, you know, kind of compensation model. Um, and so big thanks to Dow Punk for kind of uh, uh, starting some seed funding um, in the first stage of what we hope to be a, a public goods book. Um, I'm you know, not a writer or, you know, the big researcher, that's mostly Gaia. I'm, I just want to be the, the biggest fan of this research because, um, yeah, it's super difficult living just off of earning altcoins. Um, super difficult, even if you're earning Ethereum or Bitcoin um, with the volatility, you know, everybody does need you know, some basic needs met. I think one of the biggest things in Web3 is that it opens up, you know, if, if we see Web3 as, you know, uh, an environment where people tend to cooperate, um, where trust can be built, you know, this opens up the ability to address a diversity of human needs. And, you know, essentially in low trust environments, we tend to compete and in high trust environments, we tend to cooperate. And so if we have tools that are building trust, opening up communication, enabling us to request and share our needs with each other, I think those are the protocols that will replace Twitter, right? And, and, and remove the blockers that's between platforms because ultimately, Ultimately, we don't trust each other when we come to Twitter, right? We don't have to trust anybody. Uh, we build relationships through activities together that build trust. But, right, fundamentally, the use case for Twitter is that, you know, if, if your government's hijacking everything, you know, you can cre create anonymous accounts and still get that news out there. Um, so I'm just super interested in this topic. Love hearing folks, you know, thoughts on it and... You know, this project is going to take a, a, a year or two. Um, and, 
yeah, just really appreciate everybody's feedback um, and in, you know, support. <laughs>